Hey everybody, it's Anna and welcome back to my booktube channel. The video that I'm going to be making today is going to be the uh, bookish and book adjacent things that I got for Christmas, Hanukkah, celebrate a lot of holidays in my family. So um, yeah, I mostly receive books because I usually just ask for books for the holidays. I go on like a sort of self-imposed book buying ban that's also kind of a familial um, traditional book buying ban whereby my parents and other people that give me gifts for the holidays are like, hey, don't buy books because we need to get you things that you haven't actually read, which because I read a lot, they're like, it's hard enough. Just don't buy any more for yourself. So I thought that I would make a little video about the books that I received and also bookish adjacent things. Um, yeah, this is just gonna be that and I am very grateful to each and every person that so kindly <laughs> took the time out of their uh, their day and their resources and stuff to give me a gift. So the th first thing I wanted to show you is I got this really adorable mug. It's one of the heat changing ones which I thought was persuadent to this channel because my husband gave this to me for Christmas along with a bunch of tea from my favorite tea maker which is uh, Smith Tea and they're out of state so it's like a two hour drive to actually get to their shop so he did one of those like online bulk orders and bought me a whole bunch of my favorite teas that we can't get in like the grocery stores here so thank you Sean um, and the artwork on this mug is done by Kyle Fairley who did the artwork for one of my very favorite board games of all time called Root you've probably seen this before if you watch my geekly wrap-ups but I just love how it's this little it's this little like foresty guy it's got cute little animals going into like a snowy wood with them and it's just super delightful and it is a heat changing mug so as you drink down uh, the forest sort of darkens as the moon sets I suppose. Um, speaking of tea I also received these really adorable um, hold on I'm gonna be really careful with them uh, little Winnie the Pooh teacups. They have Pooh on one side and Eeyore and Piglet on the other sides along with some saucers and these were from my friend Kara. The saucer has a little Winnie the Pooh thing. Um, you you all have not seen it because I've, I have the power of magic and editing, but Winnie the Pooh is one of those like stories that between the book, all of the movies, the different animated adaptations and everything, I love Winnie the Pooh so much that I get really emotional whenever people talk about Winnie the Pooh and it really makes me cry. And Kara knows this because she started talking about Winnie the Pooh one day at work and I, this was back when we were working together and I had to go to our store's back room and compose myself because I got really worked up about how much I love Winnie the Pooh and I started crying. So I also started crying when she gave me this gift. I had also had a couple drinks in me and had just gone on a rant about the rise of Skywalker at that point. So I was all head up emotionally anyways, but thank you so much, Kara, for gifting these to me. She also very sweetly gave me, she's a DM for one of the um, Dungeons and Dragons campaigns that I play. She got me these beautiful, let me focus it, hold on. These beautiful little like, they're called Heartbeat Dice um, and they're in the bisexual pride flag colors. So I'm kind of just twisting and you can see they're translucent, but they have this really cool like layered effect that looks like the bi pride flag. Oh. I have used them so far for one game, which was called Kobold Endeavor. It's a single uh, rules sheet RPG that you will hear more about when I wrap it up at the end of the week, and that was GM'd by my friend Tyler. That was definitely the best way to celebrate the new year, playing a bunch of video games with my husband and then playing some tabletop RPGs with Tyler and also some new friends and using Kara's dice. So that was wonderful. Okay, um, let's see. We have a few more things that aren't books, but again, are book adjacent. So Sean actually got me for Christmas um, a new backpack because my current backpack is frayed and full of holes and kind of falling apart. It was just a cheap backpack that I bought 
back in graduate school, so I was like, okay, I need something that can fit my laptop and that is cheap. Um, so he actually went out and bought me a really nice backpack that I can use for hiking and outdoor stuff. I think it's going to make a great convention backpack also. And he said that he actually tested how many books the backpack can fit because he knows how many books I carry around when we travel and do stuff like that, which I thought was really sweet. And then this was something that he just picked up for me um, on our trip to Philadelphia. There was a bakery called Essen that we went to and they made this bag. On one side it says, great traditions aren't born, they're bred. And on the other side is a picture of a challah loaf, which is the Jewish bread for the holiday of Shabbat, which happens every week. It is a huge uh, traditional food in our family. We love to make challah French toast together. We love to have it anytime we have people over for dinner. And as you can see in the words of uh, Oscar Wilde, it's a rather capacious handbag, and I used it as we were traveling around New York and Philadelphia to carry around all of my effects. You can fit a whole heckin' lot in that bag, and I really, really love it. Okay, so let's go ahead and keep up with the books. So first I guess I'll just do the ones that uh, Sean got me for Christmas. So this one is called The Nameless City by Faith Aaron Hicks. It is the first in a series. He actually bought me all three books in the series. And it is about these two young kids. Um, one of them is named Kai and one is named Rat. And they live in this place that is a city with no name. The only people that ever name this city are the people who conquer this city. And it has stood for thousands of years, but it can never be held by a conqueror for more than 30 years. I am trying so damn hard to pace myself going through these books because I tend to blow through graphic novels super quickly, lightning speed. Like I already read prose really fast. So graphic novels, I just like, Meow, but I'm trying to make myself slow down and take the time to savor and enjoy this story because it's so good. So I'm letting myself read like one chapter. The chapters are like loosely divided by uh, days and like the 30 days that the, the Dao, who are the conquerors, have held onto the city. So I'm just over halfway through it right now and I really love it. Definitely going to try and take my time with the rest of these. He also got me another graphic novel, uh, I guess like duology, that I had um, been hoping to read, which is called Compass Self. This is by Hope Larson and illustrated by Rebecca Mock, and it is about some twins, secret treasure, gender disguise, and airships piracy kind of stuff, which is totally my jam. Um, if you've been watching this channel at all, you'll be like, yep, that sounds really on brand for Anna. Um, let's see, da, 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 da. oh yeah. So this is kind of a callback to our first Christmas in Seattle, which was two years ago now, where Sean got me the hardcover volume one of Paper Girls by Brian K. Vaughn and illustrated by Cliff Chang. Uh, this year I got the hardcover volume two, which I think contains, I don't remember, it might be trades four and five or three, four and five. I'm not sure exactly which of the issues is contained within this, but I have already read all of these. This is just something that is like going to be added to the collection of Paper Girls. And then he also got me the paperback volume six, which is the last volume in the saga. I'm really sad that it's coming to an end. I'm kind of surprised it's coming to an end after six volumes because Brian K. Vaughn is kind of known for just creating these stories that will just go and go and go. But I am really looking forward to reading the conclusion of that. Okay, the next uh, set of books is kind of adjacent to another one of the gifts that he gave me. And those are these graphic novels. I got the first two of the series called The Sixth Gun by Cullen Bunn and Brian Hurt. I had never heard of this series before, which as somebody that has spent most of my like working life working in bookshops and comic book shops and libraries and just other like places focused on books and stories. I'm stunned that I hadn't heard of these, but it kind of sounds like a sort of Lord of the Rings level of epicness, a story that takes place in like a fantasy version of the Wild West. The Wild West is something that like I never really considered myself to be a fan of westerns until recently I realized that a lot of my favorite stories are westerns in the sense that they follow the tropes of the western but not that they take place in the Wild West and that I just started getting really into playing a bunch of different like western 
RPGs. I think that there are a lot of great uh, authors really interrogating that space and kind of trying to use the space of the Western as a way to critique the like white supremacist narrative, especially of American exceptionalism and Manifest Destiny and stuff like that. And I think I've really like realized that I enjoy those types of Westerns that are challenging the norms that the Western genre itself has set up, if that makes sense. And this book series looks like it's going to do just that. Now, the reason why Sean ended up getting me this series ties into uh, the next couple of books that he got for me, which are the uh, role playing game, like core rule book for the Savage World system and the source book that takes place for the Savage World system, but in the universe of the Sixth Gun which is that comic book series. I have never played this system before. I have friends that have, and I've seen it with sign-up sheets at conventions, but you know, there's only so many hours in a day when you're at a convention, and I always bite off more than I can chew. So I am really looking forward to running and hopefully playing um, my own sort of adventure in this, in this universe. And then the last book that Sean gave me for Christmas is Fiasco, which is another role-playing game that does not have a GM that is basically it's kind of like along the lines of uh of Fargo where there's sort of like a plan in place that is supposed to be very basic simple in and out and things get complicated and characters interact like this this blurb says that it draws a lot upon the um the type of stories of like the Coen brothers and it is definitely more of a storytelling RPG than a game mechanics RPG but I've heard a lot about Fiasco I just have never played it so I'm really excited to now. Alright so those were all of the sort of bookish things whoops clanking around here so those were sort of all of the bookish things that I received from my husband for this year. Uh, let's see, the rest of these are either people that sent things off of my Amazon wish list, which I had linked um, in my description box for the month of December, if people were so inclined. Um, and y'all were so inclined, like, oh my god, that was not something I expected. Maybe one or two people would send me books off of that, and I have an entire pile here that I have to show you. So. Thank you so much for your generosity. It's just blown me away that people who watch this actually like get something out of these videos and also are like willing to spend money on buying books for me, which is like really kind of you. So just thank you very, very, very much from the bottom of my heart. So I went over a couple of these already because I had put them in a vlog, but I want them to be here just in case. Okay, I had this book, The Familiars by Stacey Halls, on my wish list. This came from an anonymous sender, so thank you, whoever you are. Um, I'm not sure who sent this to me, but I, this was the first book that I got off my wish list, and I really appreciated that. Then I got The Last Black Unicorn by Tiffany Haddish, which is her memoir about being like a comedian, and I really just I love her sense of humor, so I'm excited to read this book. And this was from somebody that is called My Secret Santa, Mar. So thank you, Mar. I am not sure if Mar is somebody from a Secret Santa that I actually signed up for, because I signed up to do several this holiday season, or if Mar is just a random person that wanted to buy me something off of my wish list. So if that's you, thanks, Mar. Okay, and then I had a couple of books that came from people from a Discord server that I'm part of. We're all part of Devin Rue's Discord server. She does a lot of fantasy map making. So I received this book called Rise of the Video Game Zinesters from Crazy Yenna. Thank you so much. And also the books An Unkindness of Ghosts and I Contain Multitudes from somebody named Odin, who is also from that server. So thanks to both of you for sharing the geek love around. I will get to all of these books. I'm hoping to get through all of these books within like the first three months of the new year because I was gifted them and I want people to know I'm really excited to read them by reading them in a timely fashion. So let's see. <laughs> All right. There was a gift exchange that I signed up for that was like a bisexual, pansexual, queer gift exchange that I found out about on Twitter 
um, just because, you know, gay Twitter, we like to give things. We like to pass around the, the same $5 and take care of each other and give each other gifts. That's kind of my thing. So I had somebody named Amanda who very kindly gifted me Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Ngan, which is a book that I have been trying to read since it came out. I have been often on library waiting lists for this book for what feels like years now. I guess it's maybe just one year, but it feels like forever anyways. And I am super excited to be reading this. My friend Dahlia told me that this was one of their favorite books and that they got like really emotional meeting the author because of how important this book was to them. So I'm really excited to read this. And then, speaking of my friend Dahlia, they really did not have to do this. And I'm going to try super hard not to cry on camera like I did when I opened up each and every one of these books sent me all of the three books by Anna Marie McLemore that I haven't read. You really did not have to do that, but I am so grateful that you did and I really appreciate it and you know, you know how this makes me feel. So thanks. If you're watching this, Dahlia, thank you so much. The funny thing is about this, the only one that I have actually read is The Weight of Feathers and they have read all of the other Anna Marie McElmore books except for The Weight of Feathers. So we've always been talking about how much we love these this author, but we're talking about it at like kind of cross purposes in a way. And so maybe I'll just return the favor and send you The Weight of Feathers. We'll see. Um, and then, yeah, we're both getting really hyped for the release of Dark and Deepest Red, which I realized is happening in like 12 days from now, which is ridiculous. I well, uh, I had to go like pre-order it and be like, oh, I want this on the release date for sure. But I have a lot of Anna Marie Macklemore to keep me uh, tied it over until then. And then I also received a gift from one of my family members, one of my cousins uh, for my family's Secret Santa, since we're a big family and that's kind of how we do holiday gifts. We do a Secret Santa exchange instead of everybody getting like a piece of gum. Um, bought me Grease Bats, which is this really awesome looking um, queer trans cartoon by Archie Bon Giovanni, who is the same person that brought us a quick and easy guide to they them pronouns, which you've probably heard me talk about before if you watch this channel because it was definitely one of my like best books of 2019. It's also blurbed by Gabby Dunn which is fucking awesome because I love her and she's great and basically it's just about two uh queer I think one of them is Yeah, one of them is genderqueer. Okay, I was like one of them is genderqueer or one of them is trans or something. Yeah, one of these characters is genderqueer and these this is about like best friend gay disasters that I am super, super excited to read. So thank you for my, for, thank you for the book to my cousin. Okay, and then the final thing that I was gifted that is book adjacent, I'm pretty sure I figured out that this person was from the Ginny D Discord, Secret Santa. I think. I'm like 99% sure. Someone named Nick carved this Slytherin crest for me out of wood. Yeah, like it actually has carved into the back made for Anna Goldberg by Nick. I'm not gonna say the last name because I don't know if that's cool with them on the internet, but this is just beautiful and it smells amazing. Like if you ever get to smell like real wood, what it smells like when it's carved, I cannot wait to hang this up. I need to find a really good place for it. I want to, uh, in this new year, actually get the rest of all of my bookish and fan art things hung up on the walls in this room because that is something that I didn't do every, I didn't hang everything that I have when we first moved here. And I want to do that this year. So I'm going to think of the perfect place for the Slytherin crest to go, but it absolutely has to go in the room with my bookshelves. I mean, like, come on, <laughs> it's so book related. It's, it's criminal. So those are all the books and bookish adjacent things that I received this holiday season. Again, thank you to everyone who so kindly gifted me these books. Y'all like <laughs> are honestly way too generous and I don't deserve it. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more where that came from. Uh, you know where to find the big red button. <laughs> and thank you all, as always, so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!